Hi everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to look at properties of logarithms. So from the previous video, we looked at what are logarithms and also the common and natural logarithm. This section, we're going to look at the product rule, the quotient rule, and power rule for logarithms, how to expand logarithmic expressions, how to condense logarithmic expressions, and then finally, how to use the change of base property using a scientific or graphing calculator. So we've studied some properties involving logarithms earlier. These are all used in preparing to solve logarithmic and exponential equations. So in the next video, we're going to look at how to solve exponential equations that use logarithms to solve exponential growth and decay problems. The product rule is coming from a rule involving exponents. So the exponent rule states if you have base b raised to some power and you have a base b raised to some other power, notice that you're multiplying these two exponential expressions together and they have the same base. The rule says you keep the base b and you can add the exponents. So when you multiply exponential expressions, you add the exponents if the bases are the same. Well, there's a corresponding rule with logarithms and this is called a log property the product rule. So the product rule says you have a number B, that's the base, a number capital M and a capital N. These are all positive numbers, positive real numbers. And keep in mind for a logarithm, the base cannot be equal to one. The product rule states log base B of a product M times N can be rewritten into a logarithm also base B of one of the factors, m, plus log base b of the other factor. So this is coming from the exponent rule. Log base b, log base b is also log base b. So if you have log base b of a product, rewrite into two different logarithms with base b, and each of the factors gets its own logarithm, and you add. Keep in mind that logarithms are exponents. So you're adding the exponent from the first expression and the exponent from the second expression. And this is called the product rule. You rewrite a product into a sum of logarithms. Anytime that you rewrite a logarithm into two or more logarithms, then it's what's called expanding a logarithmic expression. So this term will keep coming up throughout this video. So here's an example of the product rule. We're going to take natural log of seven times x and rewrite it into a sum of logarithms. So notice that there's a product, seven times x, inside the logarithm, or the argument is a product. You can rewrite it into a sum of two logarithms where one logarithm has a factor of seven and the other logarithm has the factor x. So here's another example. Let's try rewriting log base four of four times x, y. So notice that there's a product, four times x times y, and it's log base four. So rewrite into log base four of four is one of the factors, plus, because it's the product rule, it's the sum of logarithms, log base four of another factor, x, plus log base four of the other factor, or the last factor is y. So log base four of four, plus log base four of x, plus log base four of y. Now notice that after you rewrite the logarithm into three separate logarithms, you might be able to simplify any of those three. Log base four of four is, what is the exponent on four that gives you four? And it's one. So this first logarithm can be simplified just to one. We can't simplify log base four of x because we don't know what x is. And same thing for log base four of y. And so this is simplified now. One plus log base four of x plus log base four of y. Okay, let's try example one. We're going to use the product rule to expand a logarithmic expression into a sum of logarithms. So let's try a few of these problems. Number one, log 
base 5 of 21. Now you might be wondering, 21 is not a product. Well, you can rewrite 21 to be a product 3 times 7. So now notice that you have a product on the inside of the logarithm, or its argument. And so I can rewrite this into a sum with log base 5 of 3 and log base 5 of 7. Now let's check. Can we simplify these to be whole numbers? Can we evaluate the logarithms? What is the power on 5 to get 3? Well, it's not a whole number, so it's not easy to find. And same thing for log base 5 of 7. It's not easy to find either. But we had to use the product rule because the argument is a product. Number two, how about log of 1000x? So remember from the previous video, if there is no base listed on the logarithm, it's base 10. It's called the common logarithm. And notice that there is a product, 1000 times x. So this becomes log of 1000 plus log of x. And now it's simplifying, if possible. Base 10 to what power is 1,000? It's 3. So this first logarithm just becomes 3, and the second logarithm involves a variable, so it cannot be simplified. So 3 plus log of x. Okay, one more. How about natural log of x, y, z? So again, notice that it's x times y times z, so it's a product inside the logarithm, and it's natural log. This is log base e, so natural log of x plus natural log of the other factor, y, plus natural log of the last factor, which is z. And we're multiplying x times z times y, so it's a sum of three separate logarithms. And again, each of these involves a variable, so those cannot be simplified any further. So these, this first example gives you an idea of how to use the product rule. Make sure you have a product as the argument. Okay, quotient rule is the next rule. The quotient rule is coming from a, an exponent rule as well. So remember, if you have base b to some power divided by also base b to a different power, then you keep the base and you subtract the exponents. Now, subtraction of order matters, so take the exponent of the numerator and subtract the exponent of the denominator in that order. So that is a property involving logarithms called the quotient rule. So the quotient rule says, same as the product rule, base B, capital M and capital N are positive real numbers, and the base cannot be 1. The quotient rule says you have a quotient or a fraction inside the logarithm. So the argument is a fraction, m divided by n. So rewrite log base b into log base b of the numerator, subtract log base b of the denominator. It has to be rewritten in this order. Log base b of the numerator and then log base b of the denominator. So where does this come from? It's coming from the exponent rule. Keep in mind, logarithms are exponents, so you take the exponent of the numerator, and you take the exponent of the denominator, and you subtract exponent of the numerator, subtract exponent of the denominator in that order, with the base b being consistent. So you rewrite a quotient into a difference of logarithms. So again, you're rewriting one logarithm into two or more logarithms, so this is called expanding a logarithmic expression as well into a difference of two logs. Okay, so let's do an example before we look at an example two. You take log of x divided by two. Notice that x divided by two is a quotient. So I can rewrite as log base 10 of x, which is the numerator, then subtract log base 10 of the denominator. Okay, let's do one ourselves. So, so for example, let's try natural log of x divided by e. So notice that there's a quotient, x divided by e. So I can rewrite as natural log of the x of the numerator 
and natural log of the denominator in that order. And maybe I can simplify. Not the first logarithm, because it involves a variable x. What is natural log of e? Natural log is log base e, so it's e to what power gives you e? It's 1. So this simplifies to be natural log of x, then subtract 1. So always after you use a rule, product rule, quotient rule, see if you can simplify the logarithm. Let's try example 2. Number 1. How about log of 100 divided by x? Use the quotient rule to expand each logarithm expression into a difference of logarithms. Okay, let's try this first problem. So it's log base 10, because there's no base indicated. So log base 10 of 100, subtract log base 10 of x. So can we simplify log base 10 of 100? Yeah, we can. It's 2. 10 squared gives you 100. And then log of x cannot be simplified. And we rewrote this because the argument is a quotient. It's a fraction. Okay, try another problem. Number 2. Log base 4 of x divided by 16. So again, notice that there's a quotient. log base 4 of x, subtract log base 4 of 16. So I can't simplify the first logarithm, but what is the second logarithm? Base 4 to what exponent is 16? It's 2. So log base 4 of x, then subtract 2. And that's simplified now. Okay, try one more. How about natural log of e squared divided by 5. So notice that there's a quotient. e squared divided by 5 is the argument. So I can rewrite this as natural log of e squared. Subtract natural log of 5. So natural log of 5, that will not be a whole number. If you put this in the calculator, it will be approximately um, 2 point something, I believe. But the first logarithm we can simplify. Natural log of e squared is just 2. So 2 subtract natural log of 5, and now that's simplified completely. So this gives you an idea of how to use the quotient rule. All right, let's try the last rule. This is called the power rule because there's one more property involving exponents. It's where you have b to the m power and then that's raised to another power, n. So a power on top of a power, m is the exponent, and it's raised to the n exponent. You keep the base b again, but then you multiply the exponents. So this is a property involving logarithms called the power rule. So the power rule says base b and capital M are positive real numbers, just like the last two rules. The base cannot be 1, again, but then you have this number p that is any real number. It can be positive, negative, fractions, anything. So the inside of the logarithm involves an exponential expression. So the rule states I can bring p to a coefficient of the logarithm, and then I can multiply p as an exponent and log base b of m is also an exponent. I multiply those two exponents. So the rule says... I take the logarithm of a number with an exponent and I rewrite it into a product of an exponent, that's the p, and the logarithm of the number, which is the logarithm base b of m. So I'm rewriting this logarithm so it's still called expanding a logarithmic expression. And I'm pulling the exponent to the front of the logarithm so that it becomes an, a coefficient. So let's try one of these problems. Natural log of x squared. Notice that there is an exponential expression, so the power is inside the logarithm. You can take the power and pull it to the front of the logarithm. So then it becomes 2 times natural log of x. 
Okay, let's try one all on our own. Log of x cubed y. So the first thing I notice is that, yeah, there is a power, but the power is only on x. It's not on x times y. So I have to use the product rule first. So I have to break x cubed away from the y using the product rule. So log of x cubed plus, because it's the product rule, log of y. And now I have just base x to a power. So now just using the power rule for, with this first logarithm, so I can bring the 3 to the front. 3 times log of x plus log of y. And those cannot be simplified any further. So this is called the power law here. So we had to use both the product rule and the power rule. Okay, let's try example three. We're going to use the power rule to expand each logarithm expression with all powers written as factors. So that means all the powers are written as coefficients. Let's try log base five of x cubed. So notice that the argument is a power. It's an exponential expression. So I can bring the power, the three, and make it a coefficient. So three times log base five of x. And I don't know what x is, so that's simplified completely. Number two, how about log base b of n to the negative six? So again, I don't know what the base is, but I don't need to know the base, other than base must be positive and not one. And n is the variable, and it's raised to a power inside the argument. So I can take negative six, pull it to a coefficient, and keep the log base b of n, but I'm multiplying those two together. And that's simplified completely because I don't know what n or b is. And in number three, let's try log of the cube root of x squared. So this is log base 10 of a radical expression. Remember that radicals can be rewritten into rational exponents. So this becomes x to the two-thirds power, log of x to the two-thirds. So now I can use the power rule because it's x raised to a power. That's in the argument. So bring the two-thirds to the front to a coefficient, and log of x is what's remaining. And I can't simplify any further. So this gives you an idea of how to use the power rule. It has to be a power inside the logarithm. So sometimes you may have to rewrite so that you can find, find out what the power is. Okay, so let's look at what's called expanding logarithmic expressions. We can use more than one property to simplify a logarithm, and we saw that with the last example. We used the product rule and the power rule in one problem to simplify the logarithm. So this just summarizes the three rules that we've learned so far. If m is positive and n is positive, the product rule says you must have a product inside the logarithm. Then I can rewrite into a sum of logarithms. Quotient rule says I have a quotient inside the logarithm. So I keep the log base b, but I subtract the two logarithms. And the order matters, so it's numerator then subtract the denominator. And then for power rule, I must have a power on the inside of the logarithm, and I can pull the p to a coefficient and multiply p times log base b of m. So what's important about expanding log expressions, you have to remember there is also a domain for these logarithm expressions or logarithm functions. Let's try one out. Log base 5 of x squared y divided by z to the third. 
Let's see how we can use more than one property. So which rule should we use first? Should we use the power rule, quotient rule, product rule? The first thing I notice is that this is involved in powers. The numerator involves product, but I notice that it is a fraction overall. So use the quotient rule first. So this becomes log base 5 of the numerator. Subtract log base 5 of the denominator. Now I can use the product rule for the first logarithm because I have x squared times y. So let's do that before we do power rule. So the first logarithm becomes log base 5 of x squared plus, because product rule is a, a sum of logarithms, log base 5 of y. And then I have subtract log base 5 of z to the third. Now I can use the power rule. Notice that there is a power on x inside the first logarithm, and there's a power on the z in the third logarithm. So use the power rule to reduce or rewrite this into 2 times log base 5 of x. The middle logarithm stays as it is, log base 5 of y. And the third logarithm has a 3 as a coefficient, log base 5 of z. And since we don't know x, y, or z, this is now simplified completely. And notice we had to use multiple laws or rules, quotient rule, product rule, and then power rule. Typically, you use the power rule last when you rewrite logarithms. It's either the product rule or quotient rule first. Okay, let's get some more practice with expanding logarithm expressions. So use the properties of logarithms to expand each expression as a sum, a difference of logarithms, and all the powers are factors. So that means use the power rule to make sure all powers are coefficients. So number one, how about log base six of x to the third power times y? So notice first, I have a product. I can't use the power rule because the power, yeah, I cannot use the power rule because the three is just on the x only. So let's rewrite this using log base six of x cubed plus log base 6 of y, that's the power rule. And now I can use the power. Move the 3 to the front of the first logarithm. So 3 log base 6 of x, and the second logarithm stays as it is, log base 6 of y. And this is simplified completely because we don't know what x and y are. Okay, number 2. Let's try log base 4 of the square root of x divided by 64. So the first thing I notice is that there is a quotient inside the logarithm. So rewrite this using the quotient rule. Log base 4 of square root of x. Subtract log base 4 of 64. Now, square root, that involves a radical. A radical is a rational power. So rewrite square root of x as x to the half. Square root becomes x to the half. And then the other logarithm, log base 4 of 64. I can use the power rule because now I have, I have an exponent on the x inside the logarithm. So I can take the 1 half, bring it to a coefficient of the first logarithm. So 1 half times log base 4 of x. And now this last logarithm, if you can evaluate, you can simplify the, the logarithm even further. So what power on 4 is 64? It's 3. 4 cubed is 64. So subtract 3. And now that's simplified completely. All right, one more. How about log base 6 of 36 divided by the square root of x plus 1. So this one's going to be very similar to the previous problem. Notice that there's a quotient first. So use the quotient rule. 
log base 6 of 36, subtract log base 6 of the denominator, square root of x plus 1. And now square root can be rewritten into a power. So log base 6 of 36, subtract log base 6 of x plus 1. So make sure the x plus 1 is all of it is to the 1 half because x plus 1 is all inside the radical. And now I have a power. So bring the power to the front of that logarithm. So log base 6 of 36. Subtract 1 half log base 6 of x plus 1. And this was because of the power law or power rule. Now we're not finished yet. Log base 6 of 36. What power of 6 gives you 36? It's 2. So 2 subtract a half log base 6 of x plus 1. Now that's simplified completely. So be careful. You may be able to simplify the logarithms at the end of each problem after you use all the log properties. All right, so that's what's called expanding logarithms. There are some very common errors that come up with using logarithm properties that I have seen over the years. And it comes up with this last logarithm. I have an x plus 1 inside the logarithm. Well, can I do anything with that logarithm? No. It turns out, no, you can't. The only three rules that can be used to simplify a logarithm are product, quotient, or power. This is a sum inside the logarithm, so there is no rule for this. So that's the first mistake that I've seen. Log base b of m plus n, there is no log property for that because there's a sum. So that is not the log of each of them m with a plus. So if there's a plus between logarithms, that means you are multiplying inside the argument, not adding. Same thing with subtraction on the inside. That cannot be simplified. If there was a subtraction between the logarithms with the same base, you had to be dividing m and n, not subtracting. Another one that comes up is, what if you were multiplying on the inside? That's the product rule. The product rule says you add the logarithms, not multiply, like this one says. Quotient inside the logarithm, you use the quotient rule. You subtract logarithms, not divide logarithms. You subtract the two. And then this one says the same thing. If you subtract two logarithms, that means you are dividing inside the logarithm. It would be m divided by n. There is no separate logarithm there. It's just one logarithm. And then the last one, we've seen this one come up before. What if there's a power on one of the factors, but not both? You would have to use the product rule first to separate m and n raised to the p. You cannot just bring p to the front of the entire expression because p is not on m times n, the p's only on n only. So these are very common mistakes involving logarithms. You must have a product, a quotient, or a power inside the logarithm to simplify. Otherwise, just leave the logarithm as it is. Okay, the next topic is how do you take several logarithms that's written as a sum and a difference and rewrite it into a single logarithm. This is called condensing a logarithmic expression. So it's the opposite of what we were just doing called expanding. To condense a logarithmic expression, you write the sum and difference of two or more logarithms as a single logarithm using the properties. So these are the same three properties we've learned earlier, except they're just working backwards. So the m and the n are positive still. If you have a sum inside the logarithm, or if you are adding two logarithms, you can condense it into a single logarithm by multiplying the two arguments, m times n. Quotient rule, if you are subtracting two logarithms, condense it down to a single log by taking the numerator, which is the first logarithm argument, and divide by the second argument, which is n. And then the product rule says you can take the coefficient in front, of, in front of a logarithm and bring it back up to a power. So you make the argument a power. 
So this is going to seem like we're just going in reverse, because we are. Let's do a few of these on example five. Use the properties of logarithms to condense the logarithms into a single logarithm. So if we have more than one logarithm, we're not simplified completely if we want to condense. So number one, let's try log of five plus log of two. So I notice that there's a plus between the logarithms. That must mean I'm using the product rule. So log base 10, keep the same base, and you multiply the two arguments. 5 times 2, so that is 10. Now why do you want to condense a logarithm from several logarithms down to 1? It just seems like, why are we undoing what we just did earlier? Sometimes you can evaluate the logarithm more easily this way. Log of 10, 10 to what power is 10? It's 1. So log of 5 plus log of 2, that's just 1. Number 2. How about log base 2 of 96 subtract log base 2 of 3? So I notice that there's a subtraction between the logarithms. So I need to use the quotient rule to divide the numerator, which is 96, by the denominator, which is the other argument, the second argument, which is 3. So 96 divided by 3, that is 32. So then let's see if we can simplify even further. What is the power on 2? What's the exponent on 2 that gives you 32? It's 5. So that one simplifies even further, just to be 5. Number 3. 1 half natural log of x plus natural log of y. So this answer will have x and y in it. So we will not be able to simplify. All right, so notice that we used the power rule last when we were expanding logarithms. So this time we're going to have to use the power rule first if we want to condense. So bring the 1 half and make it a power on the first logarithm. So natural log of x to the half plus natural log of y. And now I have the first logarithm plus the second logarithm, and they have the same base. Natural log, base e, natural log, which is also base e. So if I'm adding, I multiply the two arguments. So x to the half times y. And we know that x to the half can be re rewritten into a logarithm of square root of x times y. So just square root of x, and then times y. Okay, number four. Let's take three natural log of x minus one-third natural log of y and simplify this expression into a single logarithm. So again, let's use the power rule to take these coefficients and make them powers. So this makes it natural log of x cubed minus natural log of y to the one-third. And now there's a subtraction between the logarithms, so that's the quotient rule. Natural log, make sure it's only one logarithm now that we use the quotient rule. x cubed divided by y to the one-third. And then change the root, or the, the fraction power, to a root. And one-third power is the cube root of y. Okay, let's try one more log base 2 of x plus log base 3 of y. Before you jump right into the problem, make sure that you can use the properties, product rule, quotient rule, and power rule, only if the logarithms have the same base. So this is base 2 and base 3. You cannot condense these logarithms. because the bases are different. The product rule, quotient rule, and power rule say they need to be the same base. 
All right, so that would be wrong if you made that x times y, because they're not the same base, base 2 and base 3. All right, let's try one more. How about 2 log base 6 of x plus 3 log base 6 of y? So again, you have coefficients, make them powers on each of the arguments. So log base 6 of x squared plus log base 6 of y cubed. And now notice that they are the same base this time on both logarithms. And there's a plus between the two logs. So it's the product rule. Log base 6 of x squared times y cubed. And that's simplified completely. So this gives you an idea of how to condense logarithms into a single logarithm each time. That one cannot be condensed on number five. Okay, let's finish up this video on logarithm properties with the change of base property. So this is actually a property that's very that's becoming extinct because of scientific and graphing calculators. But there are some calculators that still do not have a way that you can type in any base into a calculator. So I'm going to show you what that means. So the change of base property is used when you have a logarithm that is not base 10 or base E. So why do base 10 and base E come up so often? So on your graphing calculator, notice that you have two types of logarithms, as we discussed before. There's the log base 10, the common logarithm, and then the log base e, which is natural log. But then there are no other ways to enter in a logarithm on a graphing calculator, unless you have a newer operating system, like, like this calculator does. If you go underneath math, which has the math menu, and if you scroll down, I think it's letter A. Yep, letter A has what's called log base. If I select log base with a newer operating system, I can enter in any base that I want. So I can enter in base log base 5 of 14, and I'll get out, I'll find out what the answer is. 5 to this power gives us 14. And just to check it, 5 to the 1.639738513, that is 14. So it's correct. But like I said, not all calculators have this command where you can enter in any base that you want. So that's why we need to use what's called the change of base property. So this is the last property involving logarithms. You have log base A and log base B, so they have to be positive and not equal to 1. And you also have a positive number M. This is what's called the change of base property. Log base B of M, you can rewrite a logarithm base b into a new logarithm with any base that you want. So we're going to call it log base a is the new logarithm. So it's log base a of the argument. That makes up the entire numerator. And it's log base a of the old logarithm base. So the, the argument of the logarithm in the denominator is b. And this is called the change of base property. So how does this property actually help us? Let's go back to the problem that we had just a second ago. Let's say I don't have a newer operating system on my calculator, or I, I don't have a graphing calculator handy, I just have a scientific calculator, and I can't enter in log base 5. Then the property says I can take log base 10 of the argument, which is 14, close the parentheses, and then divide by log base 10, so the common logarithm, and then the old base, which was 5. And I should still get the same answer. And I do, 1.639738513. So why do I want to use base 10? It's because base 10 is one of the logarithms on my calculator. Let's say I don't want to use log base 10. Let's say I want to use natural log. I should still be able to do the same thing because I can change the base to be any base that I want. Natural log of 14, 
close the parentheses, divide by natural log. This is log base e of the old base, 5. So natural log of 5. Same answer again. So it doesn't matter which type of logarithm that you change the base to, just as long as you are consistent with the logarithm in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so let's finish up with a couple examples on using the change of base property. Log base 5 of 13. If I don't have a new operating system, I can change this to log base 10 of 13 divided by log base 10 of 5. Or I can change it to natural log of 13 divided by natural log of 5. And you'll find out it's approximately rounding to three decimal places, 1.594. Number two, let's try log base 14 of 87.5. So again, you can change it to either type of logarithm that you want. Log base 10 of 87.5 divided by log base 10 of 14. Or natural log of 87.5 divided by natural log of 14. And that is approximately 1.694. Either, log, either of these logarithms will come up to be 1.694. And then one more. How about log base 2 of pi? So this is asking 2 raised to what exponent gives you pi? Well, I can use natural log of pi divided by natural log of 2. Or I can use log of pi divided by log base 10 of 2. Either way, I will find out it's approximately 1.651. So 2 raised to the 1.651 power is approximately pi. So this gives you an idea of how to use the change of base property if you do not have a newer operating system on the graphing calculator, or if you don't have a graphing calculator at all. So if you have any questions about any of these rules that we've talked about in this section, the product rule, quotient rule, or power rule, expanding logarithm properties or condensing logarithm properties, or using the change of base rule, please let me know. If you have any questions while you work on the homework, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we start solving exponential and logarithmic equations.